Our first guest tonight is an Emmy-winning writer and an Emmy and Golden Globe-nominated actor. His children's book, Zillet and Other Important Rhymes, is on sale now. Please welcome back to the show our friend Bob Odenkirk, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, man. Great to be here. You are a SAG member, you're a WGA member, and you were very active on the picket lines this summer. I really was. That's your job, right? That is your job, and you did a great job. And well, I, this is my third strike. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> badge of honor. Uh, I, I, you know, I know what to do. You go out to where the other writers are, and you walk in circles. Yeah. And that's what you do, and that's your part of the job. Did you? find that as you get older, you realize that if you walk in the same direction for too long, one hip just starts to hurt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I'm like, guys, yes. we got to switch it up. This That's is, right. we're going to be feeling this tomorrow. That's right. And uh, if you turn around and go the other way, or you just switch people that you're with, then you get other screenplays <laughs> from them. Do you like the camaraderie of the people? I line? love the camaraderie. Really nice. I mean, writers kind of are loners, sort of. They kind of are in their lives. But then you put them in a line and give them something to hate together, yeah. <laughs> they become best buds. <laughs> and we're all chums. You're a pro now, but did you feel like a rookie in the 88 strike? Oh, I was such an ass Uh-huh. <laughs> I was such a jerk. <laughs> Look, I had been hired at Saturday Night Live only a few shows before the strike. What right did I have to? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I go to the strike with my friend Robert Smigel, fantastic writer, and like one of the great writers of all time. And uh, we get there, and somebody is speaking. Somebody's giving a speech. <laughs> we can do this. Hang in there. Some old guy's going on and on. And I'm like, oh, this ass. This guy's a jerk. Shut up already. Let's start walking. <laughs> and somebody leans over to me and goes, "That's Bud Schulberg." One of the great writers of, of the century. And here I am, this jerk from Naperville, <laughs> you know, giving him <laughs> But I, I felt duly chastised, and, uh, and I carried on with the job. Um, you talked about uh, your early SNL uh, uh, time, and, and you wrote a great book uh, about your career in, in oh, comedy. Oh, thank you. And yes. I heard you recently uh, tell the story. And this actually has some, some lore about talking to a host, because sometimes you have to talk to really accomplished actors. This was a great actor, Jeremy Irons. One, I mean, uh, to this day. One and, of the greats. And what was your uh, what was My your experience was that I had written a monologue uh, for him with someone else, another writer. Uh, and it was, uh, it took us a, you know, a good 26 minutes to write it. A lot of work <laughs> went into it. And it's this monologue, and he's been waiting to do the show. And he was so mad. And we, he's reading it like this, and I'm sitting right here. He's right here, his face is right here. And he's looking at this thing, and he's going, you're making me do this. I mean. And he starts complaining, and I have my recorder, and I press record. <laughs> and I get this monologue. Which camera have I got? I mean, I can dance. I can sing. I can do Shakespeare. I can juggle, I can do anything, and you have me do this? <laughs> and oh, it was the greatest. It was so great, I loved it. And then he had to do that monologue. <laughs> <laughs> I like, does that mean you went back to Lauren's office and he's like, does he like it? And you're like, he's good to go? He loved it. <laughs> he's on board. So uh, this is fantastic. Uh, uh, this Thanks. is a book that has been, I mean, uh, two decades in the making. It Zillet. is. It is. Zillet is a word invented by my son, Nate, uh -huh. when he was about six years old for a blanket fort. OK, you build blanket forts, right? Yeah, of course. The kids, they love it. And they put a blanket over a chair and a couch get inside, read books, and the cat comes in, and it's the best. And, uh, and, and my kids, we would read a lot of books before bedtime, and at a certain point, I said, let's start writing some poems. And so uh, we wrote a bunch of really silly poems, and I kept them on a shelf. And then 15 years later, here comes a pandemic. My daughter is an artist. As so she drew all the She pictures. did all the illustrations, and they're really beautiful. She did a wonderful and, job. Yeah. 
And uh, we just sat down and, and rewrote the poems so they were good. <laughs> so you do have the original. Uh, I have, have the, the original book. This is, this is what you kept on the shelf, which so is very impressive. This is what impressive. I kept on the shelf. Yeah. Old time rhymes, I yeah. called it. I wanted the kids to feel like they had really written a book by Dad, Nate, and Aaron. And the truth is, look, there were, I knew there were like 10 good ones in here. <laughs> but most of the time, they're like this. And here's one I just picked out for you, just to show you my kids were not born magically delicious. <laughs> this one's called Stay Up. <clears throat> Eat some jello. Go play the cello. See those rhymes? <laughs> Go out on the street and meet an odd fellow. Put a splash of toothpaste in your comb, if you dare, so you can clean its teeth while you fix your hair. Not terrible. Not terrible. Not terrible. But kind of, kind of clunky. What? So you obviously you come back, so it's pandemic, you got the kids in the house. So I'm, I'm, I'm rewriting one or two or three a week, and I'm knocking on my daughter's door like it's a, you know, 30 Rock, an office. Where are those uh, drawings? <laughs> Let's go. You said you'd have them yesterday. <laughs> And what about uh, Nate? Was Nate sort of getting off scot free? No, I was no. He, my son, I was like, I need ten more poems. <laughs> when they were that age, when they were writing poems with you back then, were they aware that you were funny? Were they entertained by um, you? Yeah. Okay. I was trying to be funny. Yeah. I was very silly around the kids. Really fun to do that. And uh, they, they kind of wised up. They loved my silliness. Right. But one time when my daughter was six, it was so great. I was doing a character in the mirror. <laughs> Time to go to school. Let's go. Get on the bus. Put on your clothes. And, and I stop, and she goes, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Six year old. You know? I loved it. And you uh, started your recorder again. You're like, Come on. I'd like to get this I got on a model on yeah. for you. Um, uh, I, I do know that uh, there are a lot of uh, kids' books these uh -huh. days. I, I would imagine it's a very tough market to sell one to bring Well, through. usually it is, but this month we got very lucky. All the other kids' books coming out are, are just terrible. Now, <laughs> if, we didn't believe you when we heard. Uh, yeah, you they're said awful. That. And so we went uh, and, and you had mentioned. And you some bought of the a titles. few. You, you uh, just randomly I bought I couldn't a... believe that these were actual titles because you did hit the jackpot that your book was I just got out. lucky. I just got lucky. Like, here's a, here's a new book that this is, is out. This one's coming out. It's called uh, Nothing But Sharp Edges. <laughs> why would you make this? I mean, just why, show. Do you want to show would, them? Why the would you make this book for children? <laughs> why, why would you? Why? That's why, crazy. Why would you? This is not. This is. This is not. I a mean, thing. yeah. If it's like, look. Yeah. Even, one, if I, even if I don't like poems, like it's a no-brainer, right? The You're poetry getting a book. And then look um, this. this look and again, I understand there's a lot of books about, uh, like, going to the bathroom is a sure. hard thing for kids to get over. You so I'm not judging that it's about going to the bathroom. But that's right, Esme. The toilet has teeth. Why would you teach? Why would you show kids? That's not a thing that you want to do. Yeah, I would think this was. This is our competition? Yeah. We're golden. What a good month. Yes. And then sometimes, like, you know, there's like promotional uh, uh, tie ins with, with film yeah. or TV. Sure. And, and I think that pays off. You know, yeah. there's a big kids movie coming out, and like you get a book, and, you know, the kids right. are see it. But um, I can't imagine that there's any parent out there that wants to get their kid a uh, little Oppenheimer. <laughs> And his big booming bomb. Why would you want to give the kid that? That's not a good thing for the kid to have. <laughs> not a good thing for a kid. But then, how would you? Go to the last page of this. Don't I don't see. even want it because I am like, how do you even teach this? This is for children. No. You're telling me this is the last page of this book. I mean, I will, but I, I'm worried. I mean, and everybody <laughs> will die. Everybody. The end. I mean, what? Come on. I mean, it's zillion or nothing. This it's month, it it's Zill It or Nothing. You guys, Bob Odenkirk, <laughs> Zill It. It's on sale now. We'll be right back with SNL's Marcelo Hernandez. <laughs>